next guest made history as Michigan's first female attorney general, as Michigan's first female governor, and in 2021, she became the secretary of energy for the Biden administration. Please welcome Secretary Jennifer Granholm. <laughs> Nice to see you again. Great to see been you. Been a long time. It's been so long. Now, last week, um, Senator Manchin surprised everybody with this um, significant climate bill. Awesome. Among, among other things, and there's a significant uh, yep. uh, part of the funding for a unprecedented addressing the, the climate crisis. This being the Biden administration, I have to ask, is this a big deal? Or is this a BFD? This is a BFD. Why? <laughs> First of all, it is, um, it is uh, as you noted, historic because it's the largest amount that anybody has ever invested in the United States and any president has ever invested in climate. And the thing that's going to really push forward the deployment of clean energy are these tax credits, which are very, um, it, which will create huge incentives for wind and solar sorry, and geothermal. Sorry, blacked out the word tax credit. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? How, what, what's exciting about a tax credit? Because it's going to get the private sector to be able to help do the deployment. It's going to incentivize the deployment of wind and solar and geothermal and all these zero tech... <laughs> All right, that, uh, that I it's, like. It's big, it's generous. It's... So the deal was closely guarded, okay? Did you have any idea? Because Mitch McConnell had no idea that this was coming. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any idea what was coming down the pike here? Well, let's just say, I mean, um, I had talked with uh, Senator Manchin the weekend before, just a little bit before, and he was saying, you know, I, I, I didn't walk away. Because remember, initially, there was a story about him walking away from having done a deal, and sure. everybody was so upset. Right. And uh, he was like, I, I didn't walk away. I just want to make sure that it's not inflationary. And so um, he said, just so I'm not sure what's going to happen, but just stay tuned. So it told me the door was open. Yeah. And in fact, it was very open. And this bill, not only will you get tax credits if you want to put solar on your roof, if you want to put heat pumps in your home to create a, a, an environment where you don't have to pay as much money in, in natural gas, where you can um, buy an electric vehicle and get a $7,500 tax credit off the top <laughs> at the dealership. So let me ask you about the electric vehicle thing, because electric vehicles are great. They're fast. They're quiet. There's so many nice things about them. What is anybody doing out there? I know this is sort of like a public-private uh, uh, situation when it comes to these charges around the United States, but is anybody doing anything about them charging faster? Yes, I'm so glad you asked. Today, all, well, 50 states plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico submitted their plans to be able to put electric vehicle chargers, fast chargers, in all the charging corridors of America. This was part of the president's bipartisan infrastructure law so the great news is that every state is participating. The fast charges, when I say fast, they, they have to be faster probably than anything that's out there right now. And, uh, you know, to charge in like 10 minutes or less, have to be every... Seriously, you could, there are yes. charges out there going to be a charge yes. a car 10 minutes or less. Yes. And they will be able to be every 50 miles on the main wow. corridors, right? And they have to be at least within one mile off of the freeway. So it's accessible if you're going long distance. That's a game changer because it's, the thing is that stops a lot of people from getting an electric car is that I don't want to have to wait there percent. for like 45 minutes to be able to get to the next town. Absolutely. And um, so the first part of this funding, it was a $7.5 billion portion of the bipartisan infrastructure law. Mm -hmm. The first tranche is $5 billion, And that was, that's what will go out in these charging quarters. The second piece will be to put uh, chargers in places where um, the private companies are not going. So, for example, in rural areas or in urban areas where there isn't a great penetration of electric vehicles yet, maybe people don't have, you know, plugs in garage. Maybe they don't have garage. Maybe they, you know, it's too expensive. So it's a chicken and egg thing, but we want to make sure that charging is ubiquitous. And so we're really excited about it. Now, I want to talk to you about something 
I want to talk to you something that's near and dear to people's heart, and that's the price of gasoline. Yeah. Is that it's it's down from its earlier highs, which was around five dollars. Now it's around four twenty five. But it's still four twenty one. Okay, sorry. But who's but who's, who's counting? counting? Yes. You, because you're the Secretary of Energy. <laughs> but still up from where it was in the summer of two thousand and nineteen. So, and yet at the same time, oil companies are posting their highest profits of all time. Uh, uh, Fifty billion dollars in profits this quarter alone, and are mostly spending that money on shareholder buybacks. Yes. Yes. Government subsidies to these companies are fifteen billion dollars a year. Are we being ripped off? And I'll give you a hint: the answer is yes. <laughs> what, how no, is no this? Doubt. How are these? How are both of these things okay, possible? First of all, just to be to be clear, the price of gas is derived from oil. Oil is traded on a global market. When Putin invaded Ukraine. Russia was one of the largest exporters of oil. Mm -hmm. When countries like the United States and Canada and Europe said, we're not going to take Russian oil, that pulled millions of barrel, uh, barrels off the global market. So when your supply goes down and you have demand that's going up because you're coming out of COVID, then you have this huge upward uh, pressure on prices. Normally, when that happens, you see, an, uh, you see the private sector responding. You see them investing in more production so that because, in fact, they pulled just scores of production offline during COVID because people weren't driving, understandably, right. right? But we have been asking them to increase production now that we have this huge problem with the diminishing uh, oil levels uh, from, because of the, the war in Ukraine. Um, their shareholders, this is what they say, that their shareholders are um, want them to do shareholder buybacks instead of investing in turning on the rigs that we're on. So we're, we're still... Well, what about our $15 billion? I know. that's our money. Oh, Should, believe how, how do we me. get that back? Because <laughs> they don't well, need it. Yeah, no, they... The, it is clear that we... Um, and the president has said this. We should not be subsidizing um, the oil and gas industry. We should yes. not be. And he's asked for Congress to undo that, right? <laughs> We need, uh, we need 50 votes to be able to do that. And that, that is not uh, there yet. Not going to happen. Not, not going to happen. Not, uh, not at this moment. But right. maybe there will be more people who join the Senate uh, that have our... Maybe. We'll who see. Who knows? Now, obviously, it's great that there's this climate change uh, legislation that's been passed. When it comes to climate change, are there uh, people on the other side of the aisle who, who get it, who, who yeah. are... Who are Supportive. Yeah, there are. There are. Um, um, there are people on the other side who are, they they say it's an all of the above strategy. So they are supportive of fossil fuel uh, development. They're also supported of clean energy. And one of those um, is Lisa Murkowski, for example. She's just uh, she's been very uh, supportive of the development of clean energy in Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm and afraid about what you're also, about to do here. Apparently also in favor of ethanol, because what are the oh. two of you drinking oh, wait. right here? This is, this, <laughs> this is a, a picture of us after we visited the permafrost, you know, the permafrost in Alaska. Permafrost meaning it's permanent frost, right? It's melting. And, you know, Alaska has been built on the permafrost. And so you go into a tunnel and you can see the melting of it because of climate change. Um, and while I was there in Alaska, she then took me to an ice museum. Museum. <laughs> an ice museum? Museum where there was this ice bar. We're sitting on ice and we're, we're drinking apple teenies out of ice glasses. Um, Main at advice. A, at a geothermal hot spring. So... There was, a, there was an energy component to this piece of the trip, too. So you could justify this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Secretary, thank you so much for being here. Oh my Lovely God. to see you. Great to see you, too. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm, everybody. We'll be right back.